Hi guys, it's Alexandra here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the Netflix book tag. So each of these prompts is based on something to do with Netflix and then I'll share with you the book or books that matches that prompt best. So let's get into it. The first question is recently watched the last book that you finished reading. I actually started April off really strong. I read like four books in four days and it was amazing, but I have since kind of hit my reading slump wall and hoping to get myself out of it. But the last book that I read was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I listened to it on audiobook. It was a wonderful time. I wish that the second one had been available through Libby, but it was not, it wasn't going to be available for like six weeks. So I could not pick that up, but I wish that I could have. The second question is top picks, a book that has been recommended to you based on another book that you previously read. So I don't get a ton of recommendations that come from that, like, oh, you read this, so you would probably like this. But I do have students who actually recommend books to me all the time. They know that I like to read young adult and they read young adult because they are young adults. And there are two series actually that have been recommended to me more recently by students. The first series that was recommended to me by a student was The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the first one, The Raven Boys, and this book series follows our main character Blue and The Raven Boys as they try to uncover the secrets of this King Glendower using the ley lines and other such fantastical elements that are on their side. I really enjoyed this. I think one thing that I appreciated about it was the fact that it's a fantasy book set in the, U the United States in a place that feels more real and tangible to me. So if you're somebody who likes fantasy, but sometimes the worlds are too different and too much for you to take in, maybe try a fantasy series like this, where it is a little bit more realistic and these people are in places that feel like areas you may have been in. I really liked the first one and I'm still currently reading the second one I'm about halfway through this is dream thieves and I've just got to say that I wasn't sure how I felt about the character Ronan in this but I absolutely adore Ronan his story in this is fascinating and I cannot wait to see what happens in the rest of it the other series that I had recommended to me by people here on YouTube as well as students was the keeper of the lost city series by Shannon messenger I've talked about this a lot on my channel so just briefly for those of you who may be new this is a middle grade fantasy series that focuses on our main character Sophie who is a young girl that in the first one finds out that she is not a human she is in fact an elf and is whisked away to a new world where she has to meet new parents and new friends and new school and just adjust to a whole new life and she's dealing with a lot and I very much enjoy the lessons that it brings to us. I think it's great for younger readers, great for older readers. And if you like fantasy and you're looking for a good time that's action packed and fun, this could be perfect for you because I have very much enjoyed it. I think I have three books left in the, se the series right now and I'm excited to pick up the next one. Question number three is recently added. What is the last book that you bought? I actually just did a book haul, but the one of the books in that home was Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. So again, I'm not going to talk a ton about this, but it follows our main character, Yumeko. She is Kitsune, which means she's half human, half fox. She has to flee when something very tragic happens to her. And when she flees, she takes a piece of this ancient scroll that every so many years grants to hold her a wish. And she and another person have to team up together to keep that scroll from falling into the wrong hands and having people use that wish for evil. So I've heard that this series is wonderful and I am excited to read this. I'm hoping to read this book here before the end of April. Number four, popular on Netflix, books that everyone knows about, two that you've read, and I changed it to two that you would like to read. The first one that I've read is the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series by Rick Riordan. and everybody has heard of this, and I very much enjoyed the books. I did not read these when I was in elementary or middle school. I read these at the end of high school and actually into college. So I think they do a nice job of spanning the range of appeal from young readers to older readers. If you enjoy good friendships and good characters and action and adventure, and you enjoy learning about different gods and goddesses from history, like 
mythology, that kind of thing, um, this could be a really fun series for you. The other series that most people have heard of that I have really enjoyed is The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini. This is book number four, which is called Inheritance. This series follows our main character, Aragon, who in the first one finds a dragon egg, and then he is thrust into this new life of a dragon rider and has to work to save the land that he loves. And it is really a fascinating, in-depth and widespread story. And I was quite pleased with how it wrapped up in this last one. And don't be intimidated by the size. The font is actually quite gigantic. Now for the first one of the popular on Netflix that I haven't read but would like to is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This follows Laszlo Strange and he is a man who has always been interested in this mythical but lost city of Weep and I believe in the story he finds this city and then becomes engrossed and ingrained into their society and I'm just excited to see what this is about. Everybody loves it uh, and I have not read this and if I love it I'm hopeful that I'll be able to pick up news of nightmares right away the next book that everybody talks about that i have not read is scythe by neil schusterman this is set in a world where death has essentially been eliminated people no longer die from disease or from hunger and in order to keep the population in control there are individuals who are trained called scythes that are assigned to go and remove people from this world to keep the population down and we follow two of those young people who are apprentices to a scythe even though that's not really what either of them wants to be doing so i'm excited again i've heard nothing but great things about the three books in this series the next prompt is comedies a funny book i do not have my recommendation here with me it is at my apartment but I would say that Again But Better by Christine here on YouTube. Her channel is Poland Banana Books. This story is about a character named Shane who is a young lady who is getting ready to go and study abroad in Europe. And her whole goal for studying abroad in Europe is to make right the mistakes she felt she made earlier in her college career. So go and do the things that she wished that she would have done. This was a, a very enjoyable story. It was super funny. It had a nice amount of romance. It's set in some of the most beautiful places in the whole world. If you haven't picked this up, I suggest that you pick it up. It really is a great read and it's her debut novel. I know that she's writing her second book, but it is not attached to this first book again, but better, but I'm excited for when she finally is able to finish that second book and release it. Number six says dramas, a character who is a drama queen or king. For that, I picked Till Death Do Us Tart, or I just should say the Bake Shop Mystery Series by Ellie Alexander in general. The character Lance is definitely a drama king. He is the artistic director for the Oregon Shakespeare Festival and is a very good friend with Jules, who is the main character of this series. Lance is the fashion icon, the drama lover, the gossip monger, but he is a good friend and he may be the drama king, but Jules can always count on him to help her out in the many crazy situations she finds herself in. Number seven says animated, a book with cartoons on the covers. So for this, I generally just said any cozy mystery. They have some of the best covers. They have like these, like these ones have the animated food on them. I would love more than anything for somebody to reach out to these authors and get them to collaborate on a coloring book that is just the covers of their books because I would buy that and I would love it and I would color every single page because they are literally some of my favorite favorite covers. Number eight says watch again a book or series that you want to reread. I actually have a few that I would like to reread. The first one is the Hunger Games series in anticipation of the prequel that's coming out in May, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. The another series that I would like to read is the Lord of the Rings series. I've read all of them so I've read Fellowship of the Ring, Two Towers, and Return of the King, and I've also read The Hobbit. I've read The Two Towers twice because it's my favorite, but I have not officially reread the whole series from start to finish, and I'd love to do that. I'd also love to reread Harry Potter. Reading that first book via audio really got me in the spirit to keep going with this series. Number nine says documentaries, a nonfiction book you recommend to anybody and everybody, and that would be 
anything by Eric Larson. So The Splendid and the Vile is about Churchill and his first couple years as prime minister. If you want a different type of wartime story, there's Dead Wake, which is about the sinking of the Lusitania. If you're not into that and maybe you're into architecture or you're into true crime, you could read The Devil in the White City, which is about Chicago during the World's Fair. There's two time, like two stories going on. One is about the architects who built the World Fair and then also it follows H.H. H. Holmes and his murder spree essentially that took place during the time of the Chicago World's Fair. So anything from Eric Larson if you're looking for some really good nonfiction would be my suggestion to you. Number 10 says action and adventure, name an action packed book. And for that, I picked the guest list by Lucy Foley. So this is a murder mystery thriller. It was the book of the month pick for April. I devoured this book. I think it took me about eight hours to read, which for me is incredibly fast. It is a murder mystery set on an island off of the coast of Ireland. There is a very high toned and fancy wedding that's going on. Essentially, in this book, you are getting multiple perspectives. You get the bride, the plus one, the best man, the wedding planner, the bridesmaid. And the reason that I would recommend this book is that it is super fast paced. It keeps you guessing. You think that you figured it out, but you really haven't. And at the end, I was very shocked. And I totally thought that I had it figured out. But the nope, it'll keep you guessing right to the end. It's super great. All right, and then number 11, the last question is new releases, a book that just came out or will be coming out that you are excited to read. I have three here and they have not yet released. The first one is You're Not Special, a sort of memoir by Megan Rinks. This is a book that was written by the YouTuber Megan Rinks. She is somebody that I've watched for several years now. And to my knowledge, having heard her talk about her book on her channel is that this will focus quite a bit on her mental health journey. And I'm really interested, intrigued to know her story and see where she's been and see if I can glean any kind of life knowledge from her in that particular journey. The second book I'm really excited for is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Susan Collins. It is the prequel and it follows President Snow when he is a young man. I am fascinated to know what happened to him that turned him into such a wicked and evil person or if that has just been who he has been since he was a young boy. And the last book that I'm excited for is a Christian book. It is Habits of a Godly Woman by Joyce Myers. I think Joyce Myers is really wonderful. She has a massive online presence with her church. So if you are looking for a church to tap into and maybe you are struggling to find a connection with a church in a local area, Joyce Myers is online. She has great messages. She has great books. And I'm excited to pick this up because I'm hoping that it will help me learn how to live my life as a more godly woman of Christ. So that is the Netflix book tag. I hope that you guys enjoyed. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Let me know if you do this tag. I would love to watch your video. Have a great day, guys. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.